All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo, and uh, if you're watching on YouTube right now, you can see we are back to being a Casey-less show. Um, Casey was is supposed it, to be on. Does this mean I'm supposed to be an asshole this show? 50, 50 minutes spot. ago. <laughs> but yeah, if you want, yeah, you could you could perform Casey's duties for the show. Um, Casey was supposed to be on 50 minutes ago, but Casey is... He's dealing with fatherly duties and uh, life got in the way and he just kept saying he was going to make it. Didn't make it this week. So we're rolling on without him. We got the air raid hour, guys. I almost I almost said the previous name because I almost I always almost do. But I got it we right. It. We air raid redacted, hour. The redacted guys. The redacted. Yeah. So what's up? How are we doing? Well, it's, now it's past my bedtime. I'm a little cranky. But other than that. <laughs> I'm that might fit perfectly since you, you <laughs> kind of took that role upon yourself to just fill Casey's shoes. Do you guys think I could take a Tiger 1v1? No, I, I don't think I, – Casey's such an idiot for thinking he could take a Tiger. <laughs> I can't believe he's actually gotten people to agree with him also. That's baffling. That's an, that's an accomplishment. That is it really is. Has, an he, accomplishment. has he specified that he could take a, a full-grown Tiger? Is that what he's said? If he's, killing, he... a, if he's killing a Tiger Cub, that's like messed up. That's yeah, really that is. I know, that's, but that's Casey, maybe the, Casey. That's messed up. That's the only way maybe he could do it, though. Casey Reed, so, I don't think he baby could. Tiger I don't think he could do that. He thinks that it's. It, you've heard him explain this. Like he, he thinks it's just like one quick sidestep, and then he can win. That's it. That's he thinks that's and all. What's it's his take. plan? What's his plan after the sidestep, though? Just stab uh, a chance. quick stab, a quick stab, because he has a knife. Okay, so he gets a weapon. Fine. I still think so he shouldn't just, get a weapon. Yeah, I don't think that, it matters if he gets you a weapon or not. If you can't bare hand kill a tiger, you don't deserve to even be in the same ring as a tiger. Well, yeah. Casey definitely doesn't deserve to be in the same ring as a tiger. And I don't feel bad saying any of this stuff because he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> and, and listen, we're talking about tiger. This all goes back to Tiger King, which was like the the first like pandemic viral show, right? Like when, mm -hmm. when COVID first came about and everyone got stuck at home, like tiger king was like the first topic on social media like during the pandemic so mm -hmm. it was like we're talking like this is now like a year and a half in the making of was dc tiger king well, you know what would be crazy party. though i i don't think i don't know if casey i don't know if this thought process all started there i think he probably just always thought this i don't think casey's ever even seen an episode of tiger king See, he might not that's how i thought this all started. like why watch like, why watch what you live you know what i'm saying like he just lives that way <laughs> He doesn't, need, just, to, just he doesn't whole, need to watch you know, it on Casey. television. He experiences it. <laughs> Tiger King was just home videos. I, I can picture him. I can picture him in like the backwoods of Tennessee, rolling down the highway, like picking up deer carcasses, gutting it for meat for dinner that night. Like I can picture Casey Reed doing things like that. He's got the look for it. That's for sure. Oh, oh. I doubt. That's why his kid can't fall asleep. <laughs> Could you imagine he, staring into those eyes? He, he said, guys I'm going to read one himself. of I'm going to read one of his texts. Not everything, but just one of them. He said, oh, "Where where was it?" He said, "I told her Daddy loves you," and she started crying. <laughs> <laughs> can you give? I'm me sorry, a, Casey. If you didn't want me to read that, I do apologize. But can, that's just too funny. Can you fill me in on a couple of Casey's takes so I can steal them on the show right now? You can clip them and give me credit for it. Like, uh, cause that's what he, he gets upset when I, steal he does get upset. Plan. Yeah. Yeah. Deal. If Finger I, quote. if I was a betting man, which I am, I would bet that he's not going to watch this or, yeah. or listen because. Oh, you knows? know, guys, I, I want to say something and this might be a little controversial, but, uh, oh, Ross, okay. Ross, yeah, no, we... Ross, Ross from friends sucks. Ross from friends. You know what? Sucks. You're right. You're right. I, you know what? Honestly, I think even, the first one to ever say that. that farther, yeah, you are. I haven't heard that from anybody. And I think you could probably even take that a little farther and say friends just in general. Not that great of a show. Not great. Not great. Not great. I'm yeah. With you. Honestly, that's you guys, very brave of you. I think the reason why we're six and a half minutes into this podcast and we spent an entire off season and haven't talked about Josh Allen is just because of how confident we are in Josh Allen. I think that is uh, <laughs> that's also an original take for me. Yeah, you're welcome to to steal if you want. I we can I can make a graphic of that if you would like. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll, we'll like put a graphic. The, out. The, the, uh, the 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 Michael Scott quoting uh, <laughs> Michael Scott quoting uh, Michael Jordan or Wayne Gretzky. Mm -hmm. it, was it was it Wayne Gretzky? 
and then just I think, I think it, yeah, it'll just be case. We, you know what I can do is it. we obviously we put out that graphic. I'll just put the same exact graphic out a, a second time, except for it'll just be you instead of Casey. <laughs> just whatever he said before, it'll just be that you said it. We'll just yeah. try it out again. Throw 100%. it back out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, so training camp starts this week. This is. I'm going to say something Casey says. This is a Bills show. Um, we do <laughs> talk about the Bills. So interestingly enough, though, we're not talking about training camp because why would we do that when every single other show is going to talk what, about training camp? What, They're going un- to do- what unoriginal assholes would spend an entire hour and 50 minutes yesterday talking yeah. about? I didn't say that. Camp. I didn't say that. I just said since everyone else is going to do it, <laughs> this show is not. Um, don't you don't don't you go putting words in my <laughs> mouth here. <laughs> You're gonna try and make me seem like the bad guy when I think we've all agreed that it's Casey. Yeah, Casey's a bad guy. You're right. You're right. Um, but we're not gonna do training camp stuff because whatever other show you want to listen to, watch anything at Buffalo Fanatics or no, only literally Buffalo Fanatics. anywhere only else, Fanatics. but only, only really Buffalo Fanatics. Only Buffalo Fanatics. Um, everywhere else is going to talk about training camp. So we're going to avoid training camp because I think there's a lot of other smarter people than myself at Buffalo Fanatics. And I don't want uh, you guys to have to just rehash your same takes and the same things that you talked about on previous shows. So we're going to talk about who we want to go to dinner with. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Sounds yeah, sexy. I'm yeah. hungry again. I ate dinner so I, long ago that I'm getting hungry again. Yeah, I mean, since we've been on here for almost an hour now i i'm getting hungry myself um i ain't fresh tonight i'm good i got a foot long in my stomach down my throat oh. in my stomach wow oh. <laughs> wow we'll clip that <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are doing another draft we did a draft i don't know like two months ago i think sometime after the nfl draft and that did pretty well it seemed like that was pretty well received uh we had the five eight five guys on for that so we won't have four people on because Casey, once again, missed the show. Um, fatherly duties, Piece doing more important things. But yeah, I mean, he's the bad guy, obviously. So we're going to be drafting our pretty much our dinner dates, I guess. We're going to be going on a dinner date I, with some Bills guys. Okay, so dinner date no makes pun intended. it sound dinner date makes it sound like like intimate and romantic. I thought this was more of like the lunch table in a high school meme. You situation. can you can have your dinner date go however you want. It's okay. just who you want to go grab a meal with. We'll put it that way. All right. But I, I, I don't know. We'll have to figure out how the graphic is going to go out. But yeah, pretty much we're drafting our lunch tables, our dinner dates. However, I feel like you you're want you're missing it, an opportunity be... just to take the the meme template and just insert names. That would be much easier, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably Look do that. You're that. welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and we need we need the idea. We're missing the idea guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Casey would have came up with that. Definitely. Um, so it's the format is we're picking two current players, two former players, and one coach from any time. Do you guys have any questions just about that? Just in case, I think we've gone over everything enough beforehand, but just in case. Nope, no questions. No, nah, I actually that makes I know Casey would be confused if he was here, but I got it. Yeah, yeah, he he might be. So we're gonna do the name, and I have to change this now because Casey's not here. Um, like you would you like snake draft. Does that mean like you you know is is, is it a venomous snake draft? <laughs> can I kill the snake? Can I, can I kill the snake? I won I won the draft. Can All right, so yeah, uh, can he take it one on one in a fight? Ooh, ooh, could could Casey take the snake draft one on one? All right, so I'm just putting the names back in because since Casey no showed us, um, I had to redo the list. But name generator, going random, randomized it. Steve, me, Dave. That's the order. That's what it. Yes. I, that's what. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dave. You, you. But it's a snake draft. You get two in a row. Yeah, that's true. And with it only being three people, not as not as bad it's of not, a spot to be not. in. I I, I do like told, the back to back picks. I told you guys, and I'm already marking it on my list here. I told you guys when we started, I had my number one with a bullet and I wanted the first pick because I don't, I, I couldn't imagine living life without having this player at my dinner table. Am I allowed to pick yet? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. I really don't want you to All pick right. the player I want. Well, I am going with the one, the only Ryan Fitzpatrick. 
Okay. All right. I'm in the clear. I, number I'm in the clear. I, he was my number one with the bullet. The combination of just the number of NFL teams he's played on, the number of coaches he's played for, just the stories he probably has from his time in Buffalo, playing in the city of Buffalo. Um, you see him come back to do things like the uh, the Fred Jackson, uh, the Fred Jackson uh, uh, roast, and he's just fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, you can probably find that stuff on YouTube uh, from the WGR roast. You know, maybe I'll impress him enough at dinner. We're neighbors. He lives in Phoenix. Um, I used to tailgate with one of his former neighbors when he lived in Orchard Park, invite him over for dinner all the time. They played Xbox together. So who knows? Like maybe if I were to be able to sit down at a lunch table with Ryan Fitzpatrick, I could convince him to be my best friend and I'd have someone to hang out with here in Phoenix because no one wants to come visit me. Hey, I I tried to come visit you. Yeah, and you are in Scottsdale, which I told you I'm too fat for Scottsdale. I can't do it anymore. I do like that pick. All right, so Nap, here you go, man. You're All up. right. Um, <clears throat> my first pick, I, I felt like I had to go with another former player, uh, legend of the NFL. I wouldn't necessarily say he was a Buffalo legend, at the time that he left the team, but he definitely is now bills. Mafia loves him. Every fan in the NFL loves him. It is the one, the only Marshawn Lynch, Mr. Beast mode himself. You guys took both of my picks. (laughs) I I think those are, I thought those were the two clear cut number one, number two, whatever order they ended up going in. I thought those were the first two picks very clearly. And I, I think what you can get with Marshawn Lynch at your, lunch table is well yeah first of all i I love skittles like my lunch table is gonna be overloaded in skittles now so that's perfect for me but i also think that it's just gonna be non-stop entertainment from marshawn lynch because you never know what's gonna come out of his mouth next but it's always gonna be pure gold yep that i mean you guys took it one two i mean those should have been the one two and it's funny how like we're talking about former guys and they played together. So um, I like, I like those two. So I guess I get two now, huh? Uh-huh. Um, all right. So, you know, you guys took my, the ones I wanted. Um, and there are a lot of former guys, I guess I would say that I think could be in contention. So why don't I mix things up here and take a current player with one of my picks here? Um, and it's not who you might think. Um you know, yes, he's the quarterback of the team, but I'm not going to pick Josh Allen with one of these picks. I'm actually going to pick a guy who I think is maybe the current version of the entertainer uh, that's on the team right now, and that's Mr. Dion Dawkins. Ooh. Uh, you already okay. show uh, is going to be one of my first picks. So we've seen him do a lot of interviews, Good Morning Football, other things on Instagram. I mean, Buffalo Fanatics. Wanted, Buffalo Fanatics. I love his story about how he's from New Jersey and how his first job was kind of like shoveling snow and trying to make, make a buck. And he's just super like open and honest, kind of like in a, in the similar fashion to how Marshawn is, but in a different style, I would say. And so I think Dion would be someone that would be super fun to have lunch with. And he'd be so like honest and, open with you if you like had questions for him or if he wanted to tell you stories stories like he'd be super mm-hmm. upfront and honest with you so i'll go with dawkins uh as a current player uh for my lunch table i guess i got another pick here huh yep bring it bring it back around for us oh yeah all right uh i'll go with a <laughs> former player and this is gonna be this might be controversial Oh, uh, please, please, ooh. please do this. Please do, do pick, this. Don't pick up. Please do this. Don't do it. Do don't it. Do it. I, I, I'm going do with it. the juice. I'm going with the juice. Oh, yes. no. <laughs> I had him on my list. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? I did like, not. Have you, seen, <laughs> have you seen the videos he puts out? I mean, the guy, he's like, he is. It's a no brainer. It's entertainment gold, right? I I, mean, like, I gave I gave Tim Graham a really hard time a couple of years ago because Tim Graham sat down with OJ Simpson and my exact comment to him was like, dude, like you're like you're you're getting publicity. I, I guess yours is different because you're sitting at a table and you're just talking to him. I gave Tim Graham a hard time because I'm like, dude, you're looking for pub by interviewing a guy who straight up murdered his wife. 
and like everyone am... fucking knows he did it. Um, but I guess yours is situation is different because you're not situ- doing it for publicity. You're just sitting down pure, because you're generally curious. Yeah. Pure entertainment factor. And another guy who in his own right, you don't know what he's going to say. He could say anything like you just, he could now, confess he, well, the murder. He, he, he could say anything except I'm guilty. Uh, so <laughs> You also have if if you have if you have him at your table, you have an extremely easy joke to make that everybody there will end up being able to laugh at. And it's just you knock over a juice box and you say the juice is loose. Exactly. Everybody's just going to be like, oh, yeah, that was was a good one for no one's going to mess with your table. That's (laughs) true. (laughs) The ultimate protection. (laughs) Well, I mean, I got Dion there and OJ, so no one's going to mess with me. uh, That's for sure. So, look, I mean. In the spirit of what we're just trying to do here and keeping it lighthearted, uh, I'll pick the juice here. So I got Dion and the juice with my two. In keeping it in the spirit of keeping it lighthearted, I'm going to go with the accused murder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Let, let's keep it lighthearted and bring OJ into this. <laughs> uh, well, I was trying to, but look, I mean, you got to separate that for this for this yeah. exercise here. Yeah. <laughs> I was so I'm not even gonna lie. I was considering taking him with my second pick because I would love to be able to hear the conversation between Marshawn Lynch and OJ with Marshawn just being like, "Hey, you really do it." (laughs) I'm sitting here trying Uh, to get. (laughs) I'm sitting here trying to get like Ryan Fitzpatrick's gamer tag, and you guys want to figure out whether OJ fucking murdered his wife. Well, you took Fitzpatrick, man. I couldn't. I couldn't pick him. So (laughs) sorry. We were talking about. I mean, we talked about it beforehand. The draft ends up going just based off of who gets picked first and you yeah. got to play off of that and if you can't get the original guy you were going to go with maybe your draft strategy changes dude like my one two through five are still sitting there on the board right now i'm, I'm feeling super good you know there's there's two guys that i want to get with my next two picks and nap if you steal them i'm gonna be mad i i have no clue who they are um <clears throat> Because I didn't share my Google Doc with you, that's why. No, you didn't. I'm smart. I'm struggling smart because I the current players list is much, obviously much shorter, and I think it's there's not as many good picks on the current players list. The players are so as, good at interviewing too. Like, like Rico sat down sat down with so many of these players. Like, I feel like I know so many of these players. Like, it's just, yeah, yeah. Like if I had I, yeah, it's just crazy. I I, I almost want to go. No, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go with some chalk because why not? I'm just gonna take Josh Allen. Just put him right, put him you. on my table. Makes I, I, I'm gonna take Josh Allen because who doesn't? Who wouldn't want to just sit down and have have lunch with Josh Allen? Why? Like oh, you're so. lying if you say you wouldn't want to. Mm-hmm. Definitely. No, I I totally agree. I mean, it makes sense. It is chalk, but it, I mean, why not? Right? He's Josh Allen, so. I, I think. And let's say we're sitting in a, like a big lunch room. If I'm just like, hey, can you grab me something for the vending machine? Throw it back to me. He's going to be able to throw it all the way across the lunch room with just like a flick of the wrist. Yep. And clearly, food fight. Food fight. Well, oh, clearly, I didn't even clearly, think about that. I angle. think I think you have a food fight winner in here. If there was a food fight with Petrie, I haven't even thought about that angle. Oh, and but Marshall. like at the same time, if we have a food fight, I'm kind of nervous of tilt don't, table. Don't don't bring don't bring that over here. Man. Uh, <laughs> listen, I think we know very early in this draft that Nap is going to win the vote online or maybe i mean maybe steve with Fitz, you with, haven't with, seen my next with, two with, picks. with josh i don't know Allen on the on your list you're probably gonna win and we already know i'm gonna lose because i have oj <laughs> i don't know <laughs> we've seen some weirder things happen like it, anything could happen true all right all right i'm so happy my two picks it's it, it's snake so i get two picks in a row right mm-hmm. all right cool my first one i'm gonna go with trey white so i'm gonna go with, yeah. with trey white okay uh, he just seems like and he's one guy who sort of evaded um, like a major interview he's done you know good morning football he you know he's talked to like maddie glab and, and things like that but the guy i mean the guy's just such a character there, there's a number of things that i'd love to talk to him about number one when he signed the contract he talked about how he wanted to set his family up for generations and talked about um you know gen- generational wealth and investing his money and all that stuff and and i find that really interesting like how nfl players decide to spend their money is, is something that interests me because i'll never have money of my own to spend uh so so talk, talking to him about that and the importance of that and like how he's investing his money in his business ventures like i feel like you could sit down and, and and in one moment have a super serious conversation with trey white about that 
but then you could probably also get some really cool stories about, um, you know, the Treyway Goalie Academy and things that go around in the locker room. He seems like a, a goofball type of guy who could really, you know, liven up a, a, a lunch table. I love to ask him questions about playing at a big time collegiate program like LSU. And I'd love to like see if I could get him to tell me all the shady shit they did to recruit him that was like against the rules. Like, find out number, how much money my, he really my, made. My, if I ever had a, a, any big time college player that I ever have off the record, I'm going to be like, dude, like, what were they giving you? Like, how were they, how were they hiding the money? What were they giving you? Like, what was, what were the parties like? Like, I'm, I'm, those are the questions I'm asking immediately. I just immediately, I'm like, all right recreate van wilder in my head right now what was your college experience like? that's the that's first true. thing you're, i do when I'm talking you're not about getting that player. from josh allen yeah. going to wyoming so. yeah 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 josh allen's like i don't know what you're talking about man i don't know like, they, they, <laughs> they made their own moonshine uh we drank ourselves to sleep every night it was uh um there's a reason why he lives in los angeles now um but yeah that would be um trey white would go on the list and then number two i'm going with brian dable i'm going with brian okay. dable as my coach a, a number of reasons again i would love to be behind the scenes uh peel the curtain back of just how miserable it is in, in new england and foxborough working for bill belichick being in that environment in new england um what it was like working with tom brady how that guy ticks um there's just a number of different New England -y type of situations I'd love to talk to him about. I'd love to talk to him about Nick Saban and, and playing in a BCS national championship game. And then I would just love to pick his brain about Josh Allen's development. I would love to talk to him about how Josh Allen has grown as a quarterback. I would love to talk about, you know, his philosophy going in and how things changed as Josh developed. Did everything go as you planned? Um, did, did, did something take a turn when Josh got there? Did you notice he did this thing and this thing? And you're like, all right, I got to call an audible. Like, cause, cause the Buffalo bills went from a 12 personnel offense a couple of years ago, heavy running the football to a team that spread them out. Snap of a finger, one off season, Brian Dable completely changed the offense. So I'd love to get his reasoning behind that. And, and that type of change, how analytics has, uh, come into it, in, into his game. Um, cause you know, I, he talks about how he doesn't like to run the football on first down because the analytical numbers show like passing on first down is a smart thing to do. So how he brings the number games into it. I love to dig into what the coaching staff is like, like what's Ken Dorsey's role. Cause we all, everyone wants to know what the fuck Ken Dorsey's doing. Cause he's probably going to be the next office of coordinator. I love to talk about Ken Dorsey and Shay Tierney. I love to talk to him about Davis Webb and, and what kind of role Davis Webb plays in that quarterback room. And, and everyone just talks about how he's a jokester, a prankster, Everyone loves the dude. He just he's so invested in his players, not just on the football field, but off the football field. So he just seems like he'd be a really chill dude to uh, sit down and, and drink a beer with. So Trey White and Brian Dable, and I'm feeling pretty freaking confident in my table right now. <clears throat> those are those are two really solid picks. I'm not going to lie. I have both of them on my list. I was hoping that Trey White was going to get back to me as a current player because that I mean, that's definitely one entertainment value alone. The, if he had gone in the first round, I don't think any would have, would have been like, ah, that's that's mm -hmm. a weird pick. Like, that would have been a very understandable first round pick. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now I gotta I gotta go with my third pick. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually I'm kind of torn because I, I I have three wide receivers that I'm considering. Two two former one current. And I, I think I think the one I'm gonna go with might actually tank my uh I think it might tank my my poll numbers. But I'm I'm gonna go with Sammy Watkins. He's a weird that's fucking dude though. He's he is, dude. and that's so I'm I'm not doing this because of any sort of like knowledge aspect or because I think they were cool players necessarily. I want pure entertainment value at my table. Mm -hmm. that's what I'm going for. I'm just going to up front. That's what I'm going for. I want to, I want to sit at the table that is the most entertaining. Do I mm -hmm. like Sammy Watkins? Not really, but is he going to bring some entertainment because of all of his wild theories that he'll bring up? Yeah. He's going to bring insane amount of entertainment value because of what he says and then getting everyone else to react to that. So I, I want to get Sammy Watkins at my table. I, 
I'm very confident that there's going to be a lot of people that are like, he should never have been drafted. I don't care. Because he, well, he you probably shouldn't have been it. drafted just in general also like from where the Bills took him. Maybe mm-hmm. he shouldn't have been drafted by me at this point either, but I'm going for it because I really want to get him at my table. I, and I want I want his theories. I want I to pick a, his brain. Yeah, I have I have a Sammy Watkins story for you guys, and I want I want your take on this because okay. this has always put a sour taste in my mouth in terms of Sammy Watkins um, as like a, a human being or as an individual. Um, oh, and I want your guys. To, to I want your guys' take. Even more. <laughs> I want your guys' take. So I used to when I lived in Buffalo. I used to valet. Um, one of the best jobs I ever had. I just I love the dudes I work with. There were so many great stories. The money was fucking spectacular anyway back to i think i made more money as a valet than i do as a teacher um but i used to uh valet at this place called manjas in orchard park which was uh, frequented by uh many of buffalo bills players and you know other local buffalo celebrities like fucking john murphy who i'm not going to talk about asshole never <laughs> tip but sammy watkins sammy watkins rolls in right and he he's sitting in his car they just they ordered they ordered takeout like he you walk in you pick up your food you, you take it home it's whatever he stays that's, in the car takeout. he stays in the car and he makes his wife go in and get it which it's like whatever you're a celebrity you don't want to be seen whatever but he makes his like eight month pregnant wife get out of the car and go get it does anyone, does anyone think that's a little weird can i weird. can i take back my pick <laughs> So he's Can sitting I? in the car. He's sitting in the car in the parking lot, and his like <clears throat> pregnant wife gets out and like walks into the restaurant and gets the food and comes back. I'm like, the dude literally just did that. So I'm anyway, regretting my pick. Though. I'm just gonna say I'm. I wish I you didn't tell it. that story. I wish you, you didn't tell that story you have because remorse on that pick. I do now. Yeah, yeah. I I don't want him because I think he's a good guy. I just want to put that PSA out there. I I don't want Sammy Watkins at my table because I think he's a good guy. I just think he'd be entertaining to pick his brain and figure <laughs> out what even goes on in there. Because if anyone's read any sort of article about him, um, he's a weird dude. Aliens he's a weird stuff, dude. Yeah, aliens. Yeah, yeah. I want to know if he's ever met an alien or if he thinks he's ever met an alien. <laughs> he probably has. Or if he what thinks if, he is. What if he thinks yeah, he, is, he an is an alien? Oh, my God. All right, that's cool. I got an alien at my table. Jeez. <laughs> oh, All right. So I have two now, right? Uh, yeah. Again? Um, man, this is tough because there are a lot of, like, I only have one former player left to, to go with, and there's a lot of good options for former players. Um, man. Uh, okay. I I mean, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with this one just because I want to, I want to get an all around, I want to get a really solid, like all around person here. Funny. Yeah, your wasn't table a high needs another pick. one after your last pick. I wasn't a high draft pick. Been through a ton. He's a dad, so I can talk to him about that. I'm going with former player Kyle Williams at my table. Um, You'll win some people be, over for that. Uh-huh. He's, he's he can pump your table up for the food tough fight with like a motivational speech. And again, no one's coming. No one's coming close to messing with my table. No yeah, and you can talk about golf too. You guys can. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You can, you can talk, talk about, golf. about golf. That went into my decision here. Uh, he's a great golfer. He's a dad. He wasn't a high draft pick. Obviously, fought through all those draft mm-hmm. year, uh, drought years, and then finally made the yeah. playoffs. He saw the emotion. Oh, I I would love to pick his brain about how the franchise has evolved. He was yes. here during the 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 end of the Ralph Wilson era. He mm-hmm. has been through numerous coaching staffs uh, i mean i'm sure he has been through numerous stadium remodels like locker room remodels uh, i mean the, the the place was a dump when he was drafted like no offense i i've told people this before like in the waning days of the ralph wilson era that stadium was a dump the that facility was a dump those locker rooms were dumpy the area around the stadium was it was it was a dump it was like literally like the factory that rudy walked out of in like 1980s like uh, pennsylvania like that's what it looked like around the stadium. Like it was, mm-hmm. there was just a cloud around it. It was just dirty and and gross. And you know, since the the Pagulas have taken over, I will give them credit. Like not just the world crash training facilities, but you know, Erie County has invested money back into that stadium. Like it's it's a really nice stadium to to actually. I don't think they like. I'm one of those people who don't think they need a new stadium. Like I think their stadium's fine. Um, mm-hmm. I guess the structural integrity is the word that's going to be thrown around 
on the next couple of years when it, when it comes to why we need a new stadium. But just like, I mean, the night and day difference of the franchise from when he got there to when he left would be just a, a crazy story. I mean, he's got Rex Ryan to talk about, uh, Jim yep. Schwartz to talk about, Doug, Doug Marone, St. Doug to talk about. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's got a lot of Russ Brandon and all of his antics. Um, so it would, uh, and he, I'm sure he's got some, some stories to tell and there are some, some Buffalo it, it Bill crazy. skeletons in his closet. And it is crazy. The regimes that he like went through and like, he's mm-hmm. like the only, he like went through that Dick Duron, uh, Marv Levy sort of GM. Like he was there, like one of their first draft picks, right? Like he was mm-hmm. that, uh, and then yeah, like all the different eras of like mini, regime changes that we've had where it's like, okay, it wasn't like this 10, 15 year era was like two, three year eras at a time. And we had these like changes happening. So be pretty, pretty cool to talk to him about that. And then other stuff, just life stuff, like dad stuff. I would talk to him about like how he manages, like with all those kids he has. Now I know he's got like, he's no Philip rivers. So (laughs) so, no Philip rivers. That's for sure. Hey, Hey, that's my NC state guy, Philip rivers. So don't, uh, (laughs) don't talk bad about him. Uh, okay, so real quick, real quick, before you make your next pick, I'm really trying to get a read on what your draft strategy is. Like, I, mine is just pure OJ entertainment Golf. value. OJ Golf. Steve's, yours seems to be like a mix of entertainment versus like really interesting football conversations. Mm-hmm. I'm Dave, going you with... have you have entertainment, you have wild card, and then you have just good guy all around. You I, ask, I, are you going to ask OJ for some good dad stories? Like, what, what <laughs> I, I, hey, and OJ was an actor. OJ is an actor. Too. I can ask him about his time on Leslie the set. Nielsen. You can ask, ask him about Leslie Nielsen. Oh, I can ask goodness. him about Leslie Nielsen. His time on the set of, of Naked Gun. Yeah, I mean, uh, look. Yeah, I strategy. You get driving right. tips from him. Yeah, I could very. I can get uh, how to drive through like a neighborhood school zone from him because it's like what was he going like 30 miles an hour uh in that thing uh in any case um so yeah my strategy was really to try to cover all the bases entertainment stories advice like all different things that i could get from these guys so um and also cover different generations too right have a guys that weren't all from like the same era of football so you know that was kind of my my you know it would be a great podcast you know how OJ years ago wrote that book, like how, like if I did it, and he essentially just wrote an autobiography or wrote a biography <laughs> about how he murdered his wife, like but pretended like he didn't really do it. What you know, crime podcasts are really big these days. So how about like an OJ Simpson if I did it podcast where OJ Simpson talks about like famous unsolved crimes and how he would have committed them, <laughs> like OJ tells you how he killed how he would have killed Jimmy Hoffa, like. OJ tells you how he would have killed John Bonet. Like he just goes through OJ, and tells OJ you how he would have committed how, uh, all these murders. So I'm how, just uh, I'm just uh, now Casey kind of Anthony putting this together. <laughs> I'm just now putting this together. Um it's my name on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um should I be nervous? <laughs> Should, like, should I be nervous? No, <laughs> you're getting canceled. We've done, we've done a episode, whole lot yeah. of OJ talk tonight. <laughs> hey, look, I mean, I just picked him and moved on. Like Steve was the one that went it's on. It's so about. hard to move on it. from the OJ yeah. stuff. It, it's. I mean, it's been more than enough years where it probably shouldn't be a conversation on social media, but it's never. We're. It's never getting let go there. You, you think Steve's gonna let it go now? No, nah, he's not letting it go. I'm he's not letting it go. <laughs> Uh, oh man all right your your fourth pick dave all right i gotta pick a current player here and i'm kind of going back and forth between two guys um but i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with a guy that is the other alpha on this team and i want a guy that i can get work ethic type information from stories about how um you know his departure from the vikings sort of led to him coming to the bills and just generally what makes Matt him, castle <laughs> what makes him <laughs> the type of player he is so i'm gonna add stefan Diggs to my table as a current player um to round out the player portion of my uh table obviously i still have the coach to go with so i'm gonna go with Diggs. uh i ever since he's been here i've just been fascinated by how his story around how he left Minnesota to coming to the bills, connecting with Josh Allen, sort of 
his road to really becoming the super a superstar in one year after one year on a new team. He was always a very good player uh, with the Vikings, but he was never really considered an alpha or a superstar until last year. He proved that he had what it took to uh, to be that. And again, another guy who was not a high draft pick came from Maryland, who wasn't really like a, it's not really like known as a big NFL outfit, right? Producing NFL talent. So um, another guy similar to Kyle Williams in the sense that, you know, lower draft pick uh, had to fight his way to, to stardom in a way. And even more so maybe to an extent, because he came from a school uh, in Maryland that wasn't really known for producing NFL talent, whereas Kyle came from LSU. So uh, I don't, I can't keep Stefan Diggs out of my table. If Josh Allen, the, the one alpha on the team is off the board, I'm going to go with the other alpha Diggs and, uh, and get him at my table. I would love to talk to Stefan Diggs about just his offseason training too. Like the videos yes. you see of him. Yeah, it looks like yep. it, it's incredible. It is absolutely uh-huh. incredible some of the things he does and and his relationship with his brother, Trayvon Diggs, and how they work out together and they push each other. Um, sort of that like sibling rivalry that they got going. I, I would I would be really invested in in hearing about that as well. You could also you could also get some fashion advice from him too. Like it not yeah. saying that like either of you need that whatsoever or myself. I can get my Scottsdale clothes from him. Yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah, he could dress you for Scottsdale. Yeah, he yeah. could. He is yeah. like he's with it, is what I guess they would say, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's 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 more. I don't know. Is that what they say? That, that was I'm, very I'm, dad of you. I'm, I'm, I'm freaking. I'm freaking thirty six. I'm thirty six. <laughs> don't like. I need. I need some. I need some advice on that front. So get him in. <laughs> get him in. Get him at the table. I don't think. Uh, I don't think OJ is giving me any advice on uh, on fashion, so um, especially not on you know hand handwear. So um, anyway, moving on. Those are my players: Dawkins, Simpson, Williams, and Diggs for the player list. All right. Um, I think I think I'm gonna dip into the coaching pool. Um, <clears throat> I thought you might do that, and. I think so. I, I started out. I think the 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 votes going to look really good through if when they see the first two picks. I think my my vote's going to tail off after that because I'm going with Rex Ryan. I, mean, I want that's... Rex Ryan at my table. I want sexy Rexy at my table. You just um, want to talk about Clem- Clemson the entire time, I guess. That's what you want to talk. about. Yeah, yeah. I really want to talk about Clemson. That's that's the ideal situation. No, I I think it would actually be really interesting to talk with him about his defense over the years because it was extremely successful for a little while while he was a defensive coordinator. And I think that might just partially be because of the era that it was played in some of the players that he had when he was with Baltimore and then how everything just completely fell apart when he came to Buffalo for him or, and when, and when he was with the jets, like what happened there that just everything fell apart in the matter of, one season pretty much for him where he was one of the coolest coaches that you could have when he was just this huge dude. And then he decided to get, he decided to slim down Mm -hmm. and things kind of just went South for him. And I, I think the conversations around that would be interesting enough, but then you add on the conversations with Marshawn Lynch about feet. (laughs) <laughs> and Rex I, Ryan's I was wondering if you're going to bring up the feet. Fatuation with feet. And that's the real reason I want him at my table you got because a foot thing? You got a foot I thing? want to listen. I want to listen to Marshawn Lynch's reaction to anything that Rex Ryan says. I want to hear his rebuttals to Rex Ryan. I want to hear any joke he's going to make about Rex Ryan and his foot fetish because we all know Rex Ryan has that. We all heard about the photos that he had on his desk. We all heard about the the video that he made of his wife's foot in the parking lot out of his truck and like he's a Mar- weird dude he would probably marshawn would be like dude you should paint her toenails like the rainbow like skittles just like paint, paint the rainbow <laughs> T- taste the rainbow he's the oh. rainbow one foot <laughs> one, one toe, different color <laughs> oh god that's oh, disgusting god. um that is, but that that's was so disgusting funny. but that was perfect <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, right. I, I think that what you would get, once again, pure entertainment value of just that back and forth, and then maybe throw in like a reaction to Sammy Watkins from Rex Ryan too. 
I, I, like I, I think that's Rex, just pure comedy gold. Rex and Marshawn. And the facial. Are, yeah. The facial expressions that you're going to get. No, no, no. The facial expressions that you're going to get from Josh Allen just going back and forth like, from the conversation. Like, man, thank God I was drafted after someone. <laughs> but I, I would love to hear Marshawn and Rex talk about their approach to press conferences because both of them definitely had their uh, – their their different approaches to to talking to the media, they definitely do. Yeah, yeah. I think that once again, I going based off of nothing other than just real pure entertainment value. I, I think that's a great pick. It's going to look horrible mm-hmm. on the graphic, but I don't care. All right, uh, I got my last two picks here, and before I pick, I want to say that uh, Kyle, if uh, I ever had to hire you as a GM, I, I wouldn't, and here's why. <laughs> Um, I've already selected a coach. I have my last two picks. You took a coach when Dave doesn't pick before you. Yeah, yeah. I just want that in waited. there. You could have waited for Rex and gotten Rex at five. I probably, uh, I probably could have waited move. for Sammy Watkins too. But the, so here's the reason why I did that he because I, he I'm he so unsure with my, I'm so unsure with my current player. I knew what I wanted out of my coach. I don't know where I want to go with my last player. So I wanted to see what you just get rid of another player option for me, mm-hmm. limit my choices even more. So it had mm-hmm. nothing to do with the fact that I thought I had to get Rex Ryan. It was that I have no idea what I want to do yeah. at the current player position. All right. So it seems like you guys are both tapped out on, 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 on former players. So I have no problem telling you the two that I have it down to. This is it though, right? Like I'm tapped yeah. out on, I only have a coach to go. Yeah. So that's, that's it you have me. a coach to go. Uh, he has a current player to go. I need a current player and a former player. I'm I'm torn on my former player. I got I got Eric Wood um, because I feel like he'd be really cool to talk to about the drought years, uh, playing his whole career in Buffalo, coming back from injuries, his current job as a reporter and a podcaster. I, I think that's super interesting. Going from the guy who um, you know used to party at Mickey Rats with his shirt off, chugging beers, to the family man that he is today. Um, so Eric Wood is on my list. Um, Frank Reich, uh, get well soon. Frank, uh, was diagnosed with COVID today. Um, you know, he's in quarantine, but I think Frank Reich would be a crazy guy to talk to NFL coach. Some of the coaching staffs he's been on, uh, winning the super bowl in Philadelphia, all those different things. I think Frank Reich would be super interesting to talk to obviously the comeback game. Um, but I'm going to go with my last one here. I'm going to go with Sir Douglas Flutie. I'm going with. Uh, Doug Flutie himself, I think that um, you could talk to him about, obviously, the the Boston College, the play that everyone knows about at Boston College, the Hail Mary. I think it would be super interesting to pick his brain about transitioning from the CFL to, to Buffalo, the celebrity um, following that he had in Buffalo. Obviously, like they made that, that TNT movie Second String. He was in it. He had the Flutie Flakes. It was Flutie Mania. The competition with Rob Johnson – all the different things behind the scenes um, between Ralph, the owner and, and Wade, the coach about who should and shouldn't start and all the different backs and forths and the drama there. Um, and just sort of like picking up Jim Kelly's team and trying to, to uh, you know, to try to win, you know, one last Super Bowl with Jim Kelly's team. I think it was Joe Marino who, who said he's pretty convinced that Doug Flutie would have won the Buffalo Bills, the Super Bowl in 99 with that defense that they had. Um, so I, I'm going with Doug Flutie, uh, or two, I'm sorry, 2001, not 99. So I'm going to go with Doug Flutie, uh, as my, uh, last former player and then current player. I was going to go with Davis Webb, but since I already took Brian Dable, I'm not going to go with Davis Webb. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to go with Ed Oliver and a couple of reasons. I think the horseback riding stuff would be really interesting. Um, asking him. Uh, his thoughts on Major Applewhite after the whole jacket gate at Houston would be super interesting. What it was like being a number one recruit uh, coming out of college and choosing the University of Houston. But most of all, I, I want to talk about like I, I would want to get, you know, get some in-depth, um, just get an in-depth feel for why this defensive line is underperformed. Like what mm-hmm. what's going on there? Like what's not clicking for this defensive line? Why can't you guys stop the run? Um, you know, how important was it with Starlo to Lele next to you? How frustrated were you last year having to play the one tech? Like, like what is going on with your head these first three years? It just seems like 
that defensive line just isn't clicking. So those are some of the conversations I think I'd like to have with Ed Oliver and hope he doesn't punch me in the face at some point during those conversations. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go with Flutie and Oliver as my last two pick. Okay. All right. How do you feel just in general about your draft? I think I'm going to win. I think I'm going to win hands down. I think you guys don't have a shot now. I think my I, my last two picks I know tanked my chances. I'm not. I didn't draft to win though. I drafted to have fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what that's what losers say. <laughs> uh, can I say this now that that former players are now done? Because uh, Nap, you have a current player right to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am really surprised that no one took either of these two guys, Lorenzo Alexander or Stevie Johnson. I would have thought one mm-hmm. of those two would have gotten uh, picked. And I actually consider so, taking Stevie Johnson over Kyle Williams when at my pick. I consider taking Stevie Johnson over Sammy Watkins. And I, I mean, Stevie Johnson is like, he's my favorite Buffalo bill of all time. Mm-hmm. I think he would add to the entertainment value of the table. I, you would, you would never be, you would never be a, a loss of, musical entertainment he could just freestyle for you um but at the end of the day i just wanted something weird mm-hmm. i wanted something why, way out there and i think that's why like even a guy that is a lot of people's like for me he's my favorite player of all time and that's molds who was criminally underrated as a player mm-hmm. with the bills for all those years like i don't know that at, he would make the cut at my table because i just don't know that other than talking to him about all the qu- crappy quarterback play he had over the years, like I'm not sure I know enough else about him to get like what I would want mm-hmm. to out of the lunch table from him. Not, I'm not also not it. sure that with molds, it would be like that fun mm-hmm. of a conversation in general too. Right. Like he seems like the kind of guy who like now that his career's over. He likes to just keep to himself. He's not yeah. really on social media anywhere. Like he has his accounts, but he doesn't really use them. So mm-hmm. he's, it's not like he's out and about for the public to see. He kind of just wants to be with his family, with himself, whatever. So I, I don't think that I, he was one of the players I really enjoyed watching growing up too. Like he was one of the, he was probably the first wide receiver that I was like, wow, like that's I that's going to be the the my favorite position when I play football. That's the position I'm going to want to play. Like he was really fun to watch. He was just a cool guy in general on the team, but. I just don't think he was he's going to add much like you said to the to the table. The thing the thing with Stevie too is cuz you mentioned how exciting and how fun he was. I just remember like I started to become a Bills fan right around, you know, the end of the Doug Flutie run and the end of that Rob Johnson fiasco. And then Greg Williams took over and it was um you know, it was every once in a while JP Lossman would drop a dime to Lee Evans or every once in a while, you know, Kelly Holcomb would, you know, dink and dunk down the field for a touchdown or you know you had alex what a pull and, there and you had all those things so other than that one other than that one year with drew bledsoe other than that one year with drew bledsoe it never really felt like the buffalo bills were an nfl team because you would just you would watch them on offense just embarrass themselves week after week like even in that dick Duran era with like turk Schoner and trent edwards dumping the ball down all the time like it was just the games were so boring. They were so vanilla. Our quarterbacks were so bad. I I didn't feel like you would, you would turn on the TV and you would see all these other teams and all these wide receivers on offense and these quarterbacks. And you'd be like, Mm -hmm. why can't my team do that? Like, what the hell? Like, I'm just trying to win a game 13 to six, (laughs) six to three. Like that's six to three. Yeah. Do you you remember that game in the Dick Duran era when we were playing Washington and like it was Trent Edwards and he made that throw to Josh Reed at the end and then like Washington called two timeouts in a row and got like the unsportsmanlike penalty and we got like closer field goal for Lindell and like beat them by one point. Yeah, like, like that's that, the type that's, of game yeah, yeah. we had to win. <laughs> yeah. The- <laughs> and then all of a sudden Ryan Fitzpatrick and Stevie Johnson enter the equation and mm-hmm. you know he's pushing double digit touchdowns and he's getting hundred yard games and it's like what what the hell? Like what? Where is this weren't. totally? It was a totally different brand of football at that point. Yeah. Something that you they really still weren't played. a good team. No, but, they, but at least but they it, was it was entertaining. It was interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nap, yeah. I'm really curious to see who your last pick. I, I, I think I just totally botched this entire draft. Oh, if I'm being completely honest, you 100. Um, your draft sucks. But like, no, no. See, <laughs> it, it you're gonna win. Depends. You're gonna win with Josh Allen alone. I, and I don't. Fun. I don't know if Josh Allen's gonna pull. An, I don't know if Josh Allen's gonna pull enough. I don't know if Josh Allen even. You might have to right. cuff Josh Allen to this table. 
I, I think he's going to want to be at my table. Josh don't Allen, bring, I would don't be bring handcuffs friends. around OJ. He's a little fragile. Oh, uh, yeah, that's well. They would they would have to make sure they're not at your table because then he's not staying at your table. <laughs> Who's it going to be, man? All right, so I oh boy, I'm in, I'm in a tough spot with the current players. Um, so I have a bunch of guys who are large in stature. Um, Marshawn Lynch, beast mode. We know he's a big dude. Obviously, Josh Allen, 6'5". He's a big dude. Sammy Watkins, not like a massive guy, but he's 6'2". He's tall. Rex Ryan, he's got a wide frame, um, we'll say. I'm going to go the exact opposite route. Um, And I'm going to, sticking with entertainment value, I'm going to add a little bit of speed to my my table also. I'm going to go with Isaiah McKenzie. I know you love Saran Neal. He was on my short list. I'm going to go with Isaiah McKenzie. You, not only just kind of talking with also an underdog mentality because like everybody else, I mean, Josh Allen, we know he has that underdog mentality personally, but he was a first round draft pick. So it's not the same. Isaiah McKenzie is completely different from every single other he, person. He's a hundred percent on has, my list. He has little man syndrome, right? Can we all agree? He has a little man syndrome. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that's that might play at my table. Um, well, I'm allowed to you, say that you I'm talk short, about I can, I can say that. I'm allowed to. That's Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say that. No. As a short person, I'm allowed to say that he does have little man. <laughs> he's like the Kevin Hart of the Buffalo Bills. And he's yeah. going to be the Kevin Hart of my table. You hear everybody talk about Isaiah McKenzie like on the team. It, if, if they're talking about who's the funniest in the locker room, it usually comes down to two players, and it's Trey White and Isaiah McKenzie because both of them are always up to some sort of antics. They're making people laugh. They're doing whatever. So not only is he going to be able to run and grab me some food really quick if, if I need that because I'm not going to be able to beat anybody to the line, he's also going to be able to make everybody laugh at the table. And I, I think it's really interesting too because – he has taken a completely different path in the NFL. Oh, instead of almost everybody on this list outside of Doug Flutie, with the exception of like Doug Flutie would be the only person who took like a weird path. I, I think it would be very interesting, not only just having the entertainment of Isaiah McKenzie, but to be able to talk with him about what's it like to be kind of that fighting for your roster spot every single year, because he has been. You, you get dumped by one team, picked up by another. The fan base likes you. Then then they think you're going to get cut. Then they like you again, and they think you're going to get cut. Like, it's been back and forth for him his entire career, even though he, he, he does have a really strong fan base in Buffalo. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. So I think being able to talk with him about that, but then also seeing just pretty much the stand-up routine that he's going to do with everybody else, I think that rounds out my table. And maybe, just maybe, he helps pull some of the weight from Sammy Watkins and Rex Ryan because those guys, those guys are just going to be dead weight for me on the graphic. Rex Ryan might try to eat Isaiah McKenzie. Oof. Old Rex Ryan, fat Rex Ryan would have, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Jets Latin, Rex Latin. Ryan, yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, can't. so I was hoping you guys would pick one of these two guys so that I could have just picked the other because I have a coach left and I don't know that I can really go wrong here but I'm struggling to figure out which guy I really want at the table. Um, on one hand, you get a little bit more of an entertainment factor, I think. But on the other hand, you get the entire collection of Super Bowl era stories. You get the entire collection of multiple eras of NFL stories. You get even maybe a war story or two. On the other hand, you get a guy who coached for the Bills for, in the big picture, a relatively short period of time, but has been around the NFL for years on tons of teams um, and son of a coach. And obviously there will be an entertainment factor here. So I don't know. I don't know what to do here. So my options are are obviously between Marv and Wade Phillips. Those are my two choices. And I, I'm struggling to figure out who who I'd want. And I think just out of respect, I guess, for the entire Bills history, I'm going to pick Marv just because 
um, of him being with every, you know, being to be able to tell stories about every year going back to the Super Bowl, what he did to get those teams motivated, how he was not like a, uh, you know, he was not a super like, like in your face type of like disciplinarian type. He was more of like a storyteller and like a, a tugging at your heartstrings type coach, a philosoph philosoph philosophical type coach. And I want to have someone at the table that can basically answer any question I have about any of the Super Bowl teams and tell me stories about it and beyond. Um, and while he's still here, right? So mm -hmm. I'll go with Marv. Uh, but Wade Phillips was definitely in a uh, very high consideration for me. And th this is showing our age here because um, that was the first Super Bowl era Buffalo sports personality picked in this. There was no Andre. There was no <laughs> Thurman. There was no Tasker, no but Jim get, Kelly. Like, but I get all, I get yeah. everything with Marv, right? Yeah. I get it. I get mm -hmm. all yep. those four, those four guys, Smith, Kelly, Bruce, Thurman, yeah. Andre, they were, they were stalwarts obviously on those teams, but there were other guys that were like in and out of some of those teams. Like Henry Jones wasn't there on every year. Nate Odoms was there for a couple of years, right? We had Cornelius. Bent. So like Marv can cover any, every story about any of those teams from mm -hmm. the Super Bowl era. And yeah, I mean, to be fair, you don't know how much more time you, you got left with Marv. So do you think, do you think that if, uh, if Greg Williams was at that table, he tried to take credit for OJ's murders? Well, I had, listen, listen, in the <laughs> beginning, when I went with, uh, when I knew I was going to OJ, I was like, maybe I should just make this like the bounty gate table and like, <laughs> Greg Williams and like Sammy Watkins and like, like guys that would just be like the bad boy table. Right. <laughs> like, so I had a thought, but then I had Dawkins and I'm like, he's not really like a bad boy. So if I was going to do that, it would have been like Richie Felici. It would have been like Richie Feliciano. <laughs> as a been, current a player. It been like Richie as a former player. OJ as a former player. It would have been, uh, Greg Williams as the coach. It would have been Feliciano as a current player. And it would have been, I don't know who the other current player would have been. Cole Beasley. Maybe. I don't know. Oh right? boy. Wow. Oh, oh, oh wow. that's oh, okay. we went there. <laughs> Okay. Oh boy. So okay. maybe we should make that like the instead of it instead of well, Casey having a team, maybe we'll make it like the the bad boy. Well, that's team what I was gonna like say is let's team. let's just for anybody who like follows on social media but doesn't listen to the show, let's just give Casey a team, and we'll say he and picked Jerry it. But Hughes they'll never they'll the, never Jerry be the wise. Hughes, Jerry Hughes could go at the bad boy table. Oh yeah, we can't pick OJ because I got him. So you'd have to pick a different. Yeah, OJ's form. a real outlier for you. Like he yeah. he just does not he does not fit at your table. No, he doesn't, but I need I need a kind of a, I need one wild card there. So he's a wild card. Wild card, bitches. I exactly. was uh, I was just thinking we could totally use that clip right now. <laughs> but I like my I like my table, man. I got all I got a ton of eras covered. I've got really like guys from different backgrounds. Like I think I have a pretty well rounded table actually between Doc and Simpson, Williams, Diggs and Levy. Like I I think it's some real it's not gonna, citizens. It's not gonna I, win. Like Steve's gonna win, but like I feel like my table is like pretty solid. I think my table really shows my age. <clears throat> um because that what the oldest player that I have is Marshawn Lynch. Mm hmm Yeah. So I I think that's really telling. Um yeah, I think I think my my uh, there's gonna be not many people who like my table, but I don't care. Once again, I didn't draft for anyone else. I drafted because of all of the entertainment I'm personally gonna get out of that. Um, but let's do the fourth table for Casey. Let's just okay. draft one for him. Wow! Obviously, right. he is a little fun. late. He's a little yeah. late to this, um, but let's, we're gonna we'll, give we'll, him a table. Let's go. Let's go with the mindset of who would Casey enjoy. Like, let's think about who Casey would enjoy talking to. I think we're going to need some trades then because OJ might be on that list. No, I understand. He can't have OJ. Though. <laughs> I mean, we could I, make I think a trade. number we could, I we think, could make a trade. I think number one with a bullet for Casey uh, is Richie Incognito. Okay. And Kyle Orton. We'll do I that. think Richie Incognito and Kyle Orton have to go to Casey's table. Can we be all in agreement? Like, are we Kyle, are we about to draft the table for Casey and he's just going to win? Yeah, probably. So Casey, <laughs> uh, give him give him Greg Williams. He won't Casey, win. Casey Casey is gonna sit there with Kyle Orton for forty five minutes and exchange like like dip recipes and like dip <laughs> dipping techniques. I think like we gotta give him Christian there, Wade too. Like, we gotta take they're Christian. Gonna, Wade. They're gonna oh, they're, yes, they're, they're gonna they are gonna sit there. 
they're going to sit there and, and Duke like, Williams see who, as the who, two current players. They can see how far like they, they can spit into a can from like, like that's, they're going to have a, a long range dip spit competition. You okay, guys are so like moving on. I'm still on the, on the dip. Yeah, spit yes, power. We've moved on. It's Kyle or in Richie as former. It's Duke Williams and Christian, Christian Wade. Dick Duran. I think we give him Dick Duran. And we'll give him Dick Duran. I, I thought we would have given him Greg. I thought we should give him yeah, Greg. Yeah, Williams. let's give him Greg Williams. Just, just so, well, let's think. Do we want? Do we really want to give him Schwartz? Doctor, Jim Schwartz. Is there anybody worse we can give him? Mike yes, Patton. There's, oh, there's so many worse we can give. Him. Mike. We can give him. Oh, Doug Marone. Yes. Oh, Doug hell Marone. yeah. Yeah. Hell Doug yeah. He yes. would, he you know what? There. This is, this is I, actually I perfect bet, because I bet Casey, Casey and Doug Marone, Marone would get along great. Doug they Marone, would love each other. Doug Marone is on record saying like his favorite sandwich is two pieces of Wonder Bread, mayo, and bologna, which to me probably seems like something that Casey eats on a daily basis. So I think yeah, they, that's could, a delicacy they, they could probably Casey. share... They could probably share a sandwich together. Oh, he added mayo to his. That's 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 fancy. That's fancy. Yeah, yeah. I think that might be a delicacy for Casey. So wow. we got Richie, we got Kyle Orton, Orton, Christian Wade, Duke Williams, and Doug Marone. Fuck, he's gonna win. God damn no, it! He's not, no. I don't think he's gonna. Oh, he I don't think he's gonna win on the irony factor. No. No, I think Richie could carry it. I think Richie on his, I think on his he, own. I, I think Richie and Kyle on their own could carry a team to victory. Potentially. Now, now we got to figure out which team wins in the food fight. Cause you mentioned the food fight earlier. Oh, I'm, I'm going with, uh, I, I'm going with Dave's table. I mean, I'm pretty much, I mean, if, in terms of a food I don't fight, know, Marv, I'm, I'm going one, I'm going one man down. Cause we all know no, Sammy Watkins Marv, isn't going to Marv, be available. Marv's the general of the table. He's just going to direct strategy. For how to deploy the food fight, uh, the food fight. So yeah, Nap had a had a Sammy Watkins injury joke that went. Yeah, uh, that that's just that's right just gonna there. go. That, I, I, that was a bad timing by me, I think. But that was a perfect joke. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when we when we run the food fight, I'm fighting a man down because Sammy Watkins is not I, gonna be available. I have two quarterbacks. I got a guy like Trey White who can intercept some food. Um, you know, take it back to the house, dodgeball Ed style. Oliver. Ed Oliver could just fucking, like like uh um what's the word when someone he can commandeer a horse from somewhere and just roll in on horseback rex ryan's uh, gonna eat that horse brian dable eat all the food i would I, say no, i don't know i think i think i mean i just rex ryan's gonna eat the horse that yeah. all of her commandeer so uh and a food fight i think i'm probably last i think that it's between you two richie uh, would do some fucking damage he would Kyle Orton would have a cig in his mouth the entire time. <laughs> Kyle Orton would just be too cool for the food fight. What do you guys think Kyle Orton's doing right now? On vacation, somewhere. probably chain know. smoking cigs somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Probably like probably like hustling someone at some. Do you think he's still? Do you still think he hangs? Oh yeah, out it's, it's like a grungy pool hall. Oh, yeah, yes. So, yeah. But, but here's the thing: like he probably off these it's, it's a BYOB. Cool hall we, where we he, picture, he brought his own 30 of like bush light. We picture him in some CD bar, but all the pictures of Kyle Orton on the internet that are famous are, are him like in VIP rooms, like clearly out of place in VIP rooms um, with just a parade of, of, of sixes. <laughs> I mean, and judges canceled. <laughs> and, and he was what? He was probably what? Like a five as a quarterback. Like a four. So yeah. Kind of yeah, makes, kinda makes sense. He, this is six yeah. plus four equals 10. It's late uh, in the show. He might, people <laughs> might have tuned out by now anyway. So. All right. Yeah. I think that's going to do it. We'll have to put this all out and see nap, where nap, the, the vote nap knows, goes. Nap knows how I, to get canceled is the name. Yeah. I, the, I mean, I might just, I might get canceled off of this show. Thank you. Thank you, judge. <laughs> well, let me ask you guys this. If you were me, would you have taken Marv over Wade Phillips? I would have taken Wade. I would have probably taken Wade too. Damn it. Uh, that, again, but then again, I mean, you're game. asking the person who took Sammy Watkins. We're, we're going to get shit on so much for not having Super Bowl. The Super Bowl era put bells on here. Good. Like, how, how could you guys not have Andre Reid and Thurman? Talk? Because I've heard every fucking story there is. And I've the also heard years. like I've also heard like Thurman's kind of an asshole, and like Bruce Smith oh. is like a pretty quiet guy and keeps to himself, right? So it's like Andre's chill. Yeah, is Andre's, there? Is Andre, Andre, Andre would be the guy we yeah. missed. I think I think To would have been a good addition to anybody's list. <sighs> yeah, just the cool. one year. The I one year. Why did you even? Here, why did you even Fred, show Fred up Jackson, here? I know you could have gotten money. Somewhere. Fred Jackson would have been a good one. I think. Um, he would have been a nice one. 
I think I'm trying to think. Richie was a was one we missed. I think that he would have mm-hmm. been he would have been. A solid Nate Clements could have added something. I don't know what it would be, but it would have been something. <laughs> He it's literally just a five play. minute conversation. Talk about <laughs> talk about talk about your talk about your hit on 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 Tom Brady. I don't even. Yeah, you know, I'd I put stuff on Gilmore on my table just so I could sit there and tell him Brian Mormon might have shit. I was just gonna say Brian Mormon. Yeah, I I want to know what it felt like to get hit by Sean Taylor. I don't I don't want to ever be able to experience the force. Well, Sean won't. Taylor had on that hit. He, he won't. Okay, stop trying to cancel me. <laughs> Scott Norwood would have been an interesting one. <laughs> oh, that's a great one. I think that would have just that would have been a perfect pick for mine. <laughs> Did I do a good job replacing Casey? <laughs> oh. Yeah. How does every show job. I'm on go off the rails? At the end? <laughs> <laughs> all right um yeah i i think this is gonna be really Sean interesting Taylor to Joke see is where we draw the line yeah i think i think that's where we gotta cut it i mean look we don't have to blame you for that joke we can say look we've been on this for two hours now i know it's yeah. only an hour and seven hour and eight minutes in on the recording but we've been here for two hours yeah. so i think we're we're kind of tapped out at this point um yeah let's let's call it uh, we'll put this all out on social media. We'll see how it goes. I'm really hoping I win. Please don't don't take away credit from my really entertaining table because you probably hate two of the people on my my team here. Um, I think yeah, it was fun talking with you. I, guys. I had a guy yeah. tried for murder on my team. I'm pretty sure I'm going to come in last. <laughs> I think he's probably going to pull more votes. Well, than he, was he was found not guilty. Yeah, it was guilty. tried. It wasn't convicted. I said yeah. tried for murder. I didn't say found guilty of murder. In if, the court of public opinion, it. he was found if, guilty. If he did it. If he did it. If he I still want to I still I still want to hear how like OJ would like murder other famous people who have been murdered. I still think that would be I actually idea. I kind of do like that idea for yeah. I think that would that would I don't know if I want to hear OJ like recreate what, the murder of John Bonet, but like that might be too what much. What would but. he have done with Casey Anthony's baby? Okay, oh, I think this is where we. I think this is where, yeah. The show ends. Let me get a go, Bills. <laughs> we'll end it right there. Uh, oh, all right, boy. I'll start. <laughs>